The following is an encore presentation of New Expressions. Once again, it's New Expressions. Man, these Fridays seem to roll around, Craig. I mean, we really got to look at the day, the days that we're doing this because I think they're speeding up. I'm not sure. They just tick over. Just know, moment just, by moment, it's Friday and then it's, it's Friday and then it's Friday again. I know. You just think just like, well, well, didn't we just have Dave Balestri in here? Just recently. Oh, that just was a good segment. Not that long ago. That was a beautiful was only segment. Only last week. Yeah. If you exactly. haven't heard it, check the podcast. Have a look at it. Because uh, I can tell you some mindsets for change with that one, especially towards um, the mission field and uh, evangelism. He's, all, he's got, he's got a, lot, a lot of great stuff to yes. share. Pastor Dave Balestri, hope you see. Uh, but this week in the studio, brand yes. new to the new experience. Haven't had him in program, here. I know. Where we brag solidly on King yes. Jesus and his yes. kingdom for an hour and we celebrate wow. and conspire for mm. the success of each other and each other's ministry. Sing it, brother. Sing yeah. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mick Wright, welcome Mick to the Wright, studio. Boys, how are you? Like you've ever been in the studio before. Yeah, yeah right. Like a, feel like a brand yeah, like a newbie. That's right right you now. know exactly what they're doing here, don't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our Brecky program announcer, and before that, kind of, I don't know. You, have you done every slot at Rima at different times, or what? Like, uh, you, you did a drive? No, no, you did a a day. No, I used to do middays. Middays, middays. that's the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like middays. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure in Newcastle. I think did you ever? Do, no, you did no, Saturdays. I did, I did, did s- drive time at Newcastle. Yes. I did Saturday yes. mornings, and then I yep. took over. For, I took over breakfast from you. From me, yeah. You Shane came to me, yeah. Me and Shane, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've so, been on the uh, Rima been around. network yeah, and yeah. Uh, on the back of a microphone for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. And and you even did a bit of pastoring as well, didn't you? I yeah, did right. actually. Have Sorry, I'm just sipping too. my coffee here at the moment. It's, well, it's you know, Friday morning. Been a Friday so morning, morning man. Right, yeah, got to yeah. have that. Been yeah. a Friday morning, got to have the coffee. <laughs> but um, Mick Wright, so who on earth is Mick Wright, the brekkie program announcer here yeah. at Rima CC? Yeah. Where did um, Mick Wright originate from? Give okay, us, so give us the origin story. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd just like to thank my mum and my dad. <laughs> and, yeah, no, I was actually born in Scone, born and raised in Scone in the Upper Hunter, beautiful part of the world. It's the horse capital of Australia. So I, it's the horse capital. It's yeah, yeah, the yeah. horse capital yeah. of Australia. So I actually did a bit of quite a bit of that when I was a young bloke. Yeah, and uh, I loved it. And yeah, so grew up out there. No, hold on. You mean horse handling, or do you mean sta- stable horse handling, stable mucking? And no, st- no, that was <laughs> I didn't that. do that kind of stuff. No, oh, no, right. I, was, I was definitely on the back of the horse. Yeah, right. So uh, I used to go and work with um, one of my grandfathers actually, who was a he was a, a stockman right up until he retired. So I, a lot of my friends who on school holidays at the same time they'd be heading sorry, over to the coast sorry. and doing different I don't, things. I don't think anyone would have any difficulty believing that you. Uh, the grandson of a stockman. You have the bushiest beard. You have the ochre accent. Yep. That you are, you know, the epitome yeah. of the Australian outback for sure. Yeah. Well, both of my grandfathers Is that right? were were, yeah. were both stockies, uh, yeah. both stockies at one point. Yeah. That? So, um, but I had one of them. He was a stockman right up until he retired, and the other one, um, he was a World War Two vet. Yep. Uh, did a couple of tours of duty throughout the Pacific and things like that in the Second World War. And, uh, yeah, grew up on a property up in the New England area and, um, yeah, ended up moving into the Upper Hunter after he got married and that's where we all came in mm. after yeah, there. Wow. So we've been there for quite a few generations now. They've got cool. massive horse studs up there, haven't they? Like oh, big, huge, yeah. Some of the biggest work. ones yeah. in Australia are up or in, in the Upper Hunter. So, um, yeah, every time you go for a drive up there, which, you know, I go back periodically to visit my mum and my family and all that kind of thing. And yeah. So I always love to go for a bit of a drive out of town. You know, grab a coffee in town, go for a drive out, just have a bit of a look around. And, yeah, I know a lot of those areas really, really well. Like back of my hand, pretty much, you could say. Spent a bit, a lot of time roaming around those hills out there. <laughs> <laughs> and running amok, too. I think that was all pre-Jesus, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was very much pre-Jesus up there. That was a, that was a lot of muck running was had. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but, you know, got saved in 96. Um, How'd that re- happen? Had a radical encounter with Jesus. Uh, I'd yeah. been in a drug and alcohol rehab facility in Armadale actually for several months right. and um, found myself in Newcastle of all places at a little church to, at, at Day Street. It was a um, four square gospel church actually. Yeah. And they were, they were on fire. Yeah. Like, I mean, on fire. Yeah. And I just turned up there one night to, I think I was there to pick up my gran. Uh, my nan, yeah, from a from a meeting. Oh, okay. So and, you uh, had I got a ambushed. Grandma, did you? Yeah, I got ambushed. I had yeah. a lot of people oh, yeah. praying in my family praying for me at the time, yeah. man. 
Yeah, I guess if anybody in the family was voted, I guess most likely to die young. Yeah, I was at the top of the, I was at the top of the list. I and think. The <laughs> and here I am all these the years later, still going. On you. The yeah, man, the good money you. was on me at the yeah. time, I think, or, or jail, one yeah, or the right, other. Right, it was right. either early right. death or jail. Yeah, yeah. And I was heading towards both of those rapidly. And um, yeah, wow. yeah, Jesus jumped into the picture as he often does. Yes. And uh, changed the whole course of my life, man. I remember Radically. you telling me this. Um, yeah. You were. Right there, really close. Are you telling me? Did you did you visit a doc? Was it? And they gave you some. No, some, I was in what, hospital. You was in hospital. Yeah, I, I'd yeah. been hospitalised. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'd been hospitalised when I was I was twenty five, and I had been you know I had been detoxed a few times before that in my mm. earlier twenties, and you know I was a musician as well, so I was living the whole sex, drugs, oh, rock yeah. and roll lifestyle. I mean. If I'm doing something, I'm either two speeds. I'm you're either stop in. or I'm flat out. Yeah, you're all <laughs> I'm in. just all in or all out. Yeah. There's no there's no grey areas with me. So sure. I I did it with great gusto. And, yeah, it's, I don't recommend it to anybody, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> just in case you're listening out there this morning. I don't recommend that kind of life to anybody. But, um, yeah, I was told back then that, you know, if I didn't pull up, I probably wouldn't see 30. And I was 25 at the time, so, yeah, just a young bloke. Way too young for that kind of thing yeah, to be going yeah. on. Yeah. I'm just realising, actually, there's people listening today, mums and dads and even grandparents, mm. who, whose hearts are really breaking for their kids, yeah. grandkids, whatever, yeah. seem to be running the exact opposite direction to the way in which they would want them yeah. to go. And uh, what I'm hearing is there's, there's hope. Oh, absolutely, mate. And, I mean, over the years, too, after I got saved, I was able to lead... A bunch of my own family members to the Lord. Yeah, wow. Which was crazy wow. because you know when I got saved, that was a, I think that was a huge burden that God had put on my heart. You know, I just experiencing His goodness in my own life and yeah. seeing Him do a complete, just a, an overhaul, a transformation mm. of my own my own journey. And then He just gave me a burden to begin to pray for my family members, Amen. and so I started to do that. Mm. And I prayed for years, yeah. like years. Yeah. And there were times when I didn't think anything was happening on the outside. But we know that that's, that's not so much the case, but it is the case. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing things with your physical eyes, but it doesn't look like it's changing. But in yeah. the realm of the spirit, yep. in the heart of God, he is unfolding yeah. his plans. You know what I mean? Even when I can't see it, Absolutely he's right. Yeah. Absolutely Somewhere right. That's you know, so I, true. The biggest thing I think I held on to back in those days was when Jesus had his encounter with uh, Zacchaeus. Yep. And he basically said, Zacchaeus, come down, yeah. you know, yeah. out of that tree. I'm going to come in. I'm going to dine with you and your family. But, yeah. you know, and, and he actually basically said, look, you know, um, salvation today has come to you and your household. Mm. So I come on. I got hold of that one. Come you know, on. Because it came yeah. to me. So I thought, well, why not my <laughs> why household? Not so why good. not my household? <laughs> so that's what I did. So good. Yeah. It was pride, man. So good. Yeah. Pride. It's funny enough, I've worked with a lot of your family members right before I even met hey, you. In Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Worked, yeah. And I worked yeah. with the uh, land councils and uh, used to do youth work at um, uh, a youth farm. It was a house. I can't remember the name of it. Mama. Gugada, that's what we called it. Yeah, um, yeah Gugada, I remember that. Yeah. With the kids. And, that, yeah. and, I, and that, that was my introduction to a lot of land councils and going to different places and different things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've met a lot of rights. It's <laughs> a lot of you guys here. Oh, we are a huge of, family. And then Sherry huge ended family. up doing... We can yep. work there. And that's when I met Sherry. Yep. And I remember talking about you one day, too. And I still hadn't met you yet. So that was to come. So, right. Hey, hey, so I've met Wright before I met Mr. Wright. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, did, sorry, sorry, did yeah. Evan just say he's met Mr. Wright? <laughs> sorry, mate. I'm, I'm reserved. Yeah, you're reserved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reserved. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, I just had to do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, it's always an open door, that one. You know, I'm still back at this grandma who prays you into the kingdom, right? Yeah, it's just like there. There is so much hope mm. for believing grandparents and believing parents. Right. You know, if you've got someone who's who's voted most likely to end up in jail in your family, keep yeah. praying. Just keep praying. Exactly right. I mean, look, my you know, I, I never found out until years. I, I mean, I came from a, a home that, you know, it was mum and dad. I had a younger sister there, and you know, my my parents weren't drinkers they weren't drug yeah. addicts anything like that yeah, they were just yeah. for all intents and purposes middle class australians yep. they both worked you know both yep. looked after us yep. um but i guess people make decisions in their life yeah and that's exactly yeah. what i did i made a whole lot of yeah, bad yeah. ones yeah. made a lot of good ones along the way but a whole lot of bad ones too and yeah. but there were some things in the family as well in the peripherals of our my immediate family there was a lot of alcoholism and things like that on both sides on my mum and my dad's side yeah and um yeah, I saw it take out a few people over the 
over the course of my life, you know, people dying from, from alcohol-related issues. So, you know, I was probably... Again, I was one of those people, I think, who just got on that train. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it really did take an act of God to, to do that, you know. And like I said, my, my nan... Obviously, she was a prayer, but there was a lot of other people in my family too that I yeah. found out years down the track were Christians. You know, yeah, you right. don't, you're not usually aware of that stuff until you get enlightened yourself. Yeah, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's starting to reveal things to you, and you're like, mm. "Whoa, I had no idea yeah. that those people were Christians." You know, and yeah. so yeah. when I did get saved, oh man, I mean, it was you talk about rejoicing. They were, <laughs> I mean, not just the things that were going on in heaven, obviously, yeah. but here on the earth, you know, with different family members. So put us in that meeting, but we, you know, where you encounter Jesus, like, sure. What do you remember of it? Oh man, it was pretty crazy. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I mean, I I was out the front. And um, I was having a cigarette. I still smoked at the time, you know. Yeah. And I'm um, just standing out in the dark, just basically waiting for this event to finish. Literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> standing out in the dark. <laughs> and um, the doors were open at the back, and I, I could see in, and the place was packed. Yeah, right. You know? and, in um, Newey? Is yeah. in Newcastle, in West yeah. Lakes, yeah, Toronto. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, the place was packed, and I remember just seeing some of my family members in there, and I'm like, wow, what's he doing in there, or what's she doing in there? I had no idea, though. I all about this you know yeah yeah so um there was a lady standing at the back of the doors who kept on looking out at me every now and then and then by the time that the meeting finished she basically made a beeline over to me and started having a bit of a chat and um i basically i I didn't know this woman at all never met her before in my life but i just started pouring out you know all the things that i would just been through and yeah and she says to me look i'd love you to meet my husband so she grabbed him came back over and he was one of the associate pastors in the church and right. this guy was an ex-junkie and all this <laughs> other kind of stuff, you know. So yeah. we, the three of us, started chatting Yeah. and then um, the next thing you know, she's asking me, would you like to give your heart to the Lord? So I said, yeah, right on, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, before that, you have to remember that before that, though, like I'd been in that rehab for several months in Armadale and I'd, God had brought a lot of people across my path who were born-again Christians You're right. who were all in recovery as well. Mm. Yep. And so they were sharing their journeys with me, you know. Wow, um, so I'm okay. just taking all this in. And, so the yeah. ground was softened. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. The ground was – God was sowing massive seeds already, you know. So yeah. that was my divine appointment to meet him. And so they took me back into the church. Uh, the place had emptied out by that stage. Everyone had gone next door. I've walked in there, and there was about probably five or six pastors still in there. And one of them was a, a great uncle of mine by marriage um, who was also an associate pastor of the church. So, you know, he found out that I was wanting to yeah. make a commitment to Christ. So yeah. he was the one that led me in a prayer. We prayed yeah. together. And then at the end of it, he just says, look, I want you to just close your eyes and lift up your hands. So I'm like, okay, well, let's do okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So I did it, and they all got around hands, got around me. They all laid hands on me, and they started praying over me. And then the mm. next thing, the power of God just hits me, man. I mean, wow. my legs start to shake. Yes, the trembling goes all through my body. Yes, I felt something that I still don't explain what it was now, but I felt yeah. something lifting literally out of the top of my head, and I right. just burst into tears. Wow. I fell forward. My uncle catches me. We're both on the ground together. Like he's laughing his head off, praying in this weird language. I ended up yeah. hearing later was tongues, you know. Yes. And uh, I'm just sobbing like a baby. Wow. And everybody stood around me, all these pastors, man, got hands on me. And they're just praying yeah. and praying and yeah. praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I have a vision of the Lord. Wow. Yeah. I had a vision of Jesus. Um, yes. I had my eyes closed and then he just appeared. The, I saw like, it looked like um the only way I can describe it was like an old black and white war movie. That's what it looked like, like a battlefield okay, scene. Yeah. And um, I saw light way over on the horizon. Mm. And this voice speaks to me and says, that was your life. Right. And then Jesus appears on the horizon, comes towards me. Yeah. He's in the air. Mm. So now mind you, right, all this is happening yes. in real time. Yeah, I've got yeah, my yeah. eyes closed and yeah. I'm experiencing all this stuff. Yeah. Fresh out of a rehab, no idea about anything and... The Lord speaks to me and he just says, you can stop searching now, you found me. Mm, wow. And my eyes open and I just knew that I knew that I knew. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and, and I had a lot of different beliefs in things. I was looking for God, I think, trying to be a spiritual person, I think, over the years, but sure. I was 
instantly, I mean instantly delivered of just a whole yes. bunch of other false belief systems that I had, had taken on. Wow. Wow, and so important. Yeah, just that moment where you know that you know that you know. Yeah. That was the moment. That happened right then. Wow, this is Mick Wright, our Bricky program <laughs> announcer. Yes. What a story. Yeah, I like I'm to talk about a lot of different things. The phone app, Rima mm. CC, which I, 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 I sense everyone on the Central Coast has now. They wouldn't have I would them, say yeah. there'd be they at least 330,000 downloads yes. of the uh, Rima CC app. Right. Now I yeah. can't if imagine you, anyone If you're wouldn't. the lone person out there, if you're in the minority, or the, yeah, the minority, um, it's Rima CC on any other platform you like, App Store or Google Play, go get it. Even people who don't have mobile phones have downloaded That's it. That's right. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> downloaded it to their computer. Why yeah, not? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Good clean CC. radio. That's right. <laughs> ah, I guess it's they the might best. be right. Mick Wright uh, oh, from the Brecky Program here on New yes. Expressions because we're branching out and doing oh, that thing. Mate, yeah. what an awesome testimony we were hearing just before the break um, yeah. of your encounter with Jesus. That, that, that would be called a Christophany, like a, a, a moment of encounter of the person of Jesus. And yeah. I, yeah. I contend that as believers, we owe our pre-Christian friends and family those kinds of encounters. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's, that's what we, we want to bring mm. for people. You know, yeah. We're not about yeah. trying to arm wrestle someone into a belief system. We actually want to bring them into an encounter of Jesus. Yeah. And you had that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It was mind-blowing in every single aspect. And obviously it just changed the whole course of my life, you know. Like, so, well, what happened next? Yeah, because well, yeah. it obviously is. You know, yeah, it was pretty big. Program yeah, it was pretty big. In a so, Christian radio station. So I was still living in the Upper Hunter at the time, um, but the that was um, yeah, kind of very early 1996, probably January 96, I think it was, and um, I ended up leaving the Upper Hunter and moving to Newcastle for the first time. So. Yeah, uh, I came down. I was. I actually moved in. I was living with one of my uncles, my uncle, who led me to the Lord. Yeah, right. One of the pastors. Wow. I, I lived with him for about eighteen months. Yeah. And I think it was there that you know, um, I started obviously attending church with him all the time, and uh, I got water baptized in that church. Yeah, beautiful. Underwent the baptism of the Spirit in that church. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking yeah. tongues a whole lot, you know. So, yeah. um, and I think it was there that I actually really discovered what you know. I guess what it meant to have a relationship with like a a walking living real-time relationship with jesus because like i said i knew nothing before i went to a catholic high school it wasn't not a catholic yeah (laughs) you know i was godless back then even you know i was dealing in drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff at my high school so right yeah um, every principal's dream yeah yeah i mean nightmare yeah that's pretty much what it was (laughs) every principal's nightmare i was but uh yeah so you know i think even back then god was on my case Mm. Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. on my case even yeah. back then. So it sounds like your uncle sort of started this discipleship journey with you. He did, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He was wow. he was really amazing, and and he himself, you know, he was an ex footballer, an ex boxer, you know. Yeah, right. Grew up in the uh, Korokai Lismore area. He was a Bunjalung man, but lived in Redfern for many years as well. Played football for South Sydney. Yeah, wow. So he was as hard as nails. Yeah, right. But man, had the biggest heart. Yeah, right. The biggest heart you've ever seen in a man. And mm. so, you know, he just loved me pretty much, you know. Wonderful. Yeah, he just Wonderful. loved me. And, yep. you know, we did church together, obviously, and that. And then I think it was, uh, like I said, 18 months later, I think I ended up moving back. I, I just felt the Lord sort of calling me back to the Upper Hunter, so I ended up going back home. And that seemed, that over then, that was the course of, um, I think that's that was kind of the pattern of what was happening. I would go back to Newcastle for several years then I would go back to the Upper Hunter and uh, and God was I think still you know just working on me as a person um, working situations and things out in my family as well right because like I said it was over those course of you know a lot of years that I got to lead a lot of different people in my family to the Lord yeah well um, we lost some people along the way too on the journey so you know I guess being the the guy who had a full-on relationship with Jesus, you know, a lot of people were coming to me and, you know, the next thing I was organising funerals for family members sure. and delivering eulogies and yeah. all that kind of stuff, you know. But it wasn't until 2008 that I actually moved back to Newcastle and I, I stayed there basically until 2016 before I went to the US. And, uh, yeah, it was during that time that, um, you know, I, I was following after a lot of prophetic words that I'd had over my life 
Uh, Jan Campbell was huge back in the day. I was part of um, Christian Outreach Centre. Oh, yeah. And I remember walking into a church in Musselbrook way back in the day. Yeah. And she happened to be preaching there. And it was the first time I ever went there. And she called me out of the back. I was way down the back, man, flannel on, mm. Doc Martens. <laughs> <laughs> ripped jeans, long hair. <laughs> And um, she called me out and just started prophesying this wild, wild word over me, you know. And um, I'm just stunned. <laughs> you know, I didn't really yeah. have much of an idea about what was going on. But, yeah, I, I took a lot of that things to heart. And I've seen that word come to pass over my life. And it's still unfolding too, you know. Yeah, for sure. Amongst all the others that I've gotten to, you know. So, yeah. Um, and I, I just was doing life there. And it was... Uh, I. My, my journey into Christian radio, um, I was actually studying um, I was studying music business at Tyres Hill TAFE in Newcastle and one of the components was a work experience component. So there was a whole list of things that we had to choose that we, we, we could have chosen from, but radio was in there and um, it just was like God shone a, a light on it. Yeah, right. Highlighted it to yeah. me, you know, and I always loved radio. Always had it on. Yeah. Um, even when I was a kid, I'd kind of every now and then, I used to, I had a little chalkboard. That I used to draw up dials and everything on it, and I would oh, actually wow. practice this. I would practice reading things out of a newspaper. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was How about that? It was really wild. In amongst well, everything else that I love doing. Bizarre. It was bizarre, and it's one of those things that you look back on that now and you're like, and you go, oh, the hand of God. okay, God. <laughs> yeah. Even when I didn't know you, yes. way back then, you yeah. already had your plans yeah. were unfolding. Amen. So you good. know, so good. So uh, yeah, That's look, I, I heard that um, you know I heard that Remo had were, were looking for um, well, backing that up a little bit. I I got into uh, work experience with a local commercial station in Musselbrook. So it was um, Power FM and um, 2NM, local AM station. So I spent a couple of weeks doing, um, doing some work experience and just loved it. Okay. Absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. loved it, yeah. you know. Uh, and then a little bit after that, I started hearing on radio, I could pick Rima up in the upper hundred at the time. I think I was one of the only people that I knew who could get we it. We only just scratched into right. Brook. Only just Right. So I was in Aberdeen out. and yeah. I could just hear it. Yeah. And depending on the atmospheric conditions in any yeah, given sure, day or night, sure. exactly. it came through a lot clearer than others. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I started listening to Christian radio way back then. Right. Way back then. And um, then I started to hear that they were looking for volunteer announcers. So uh, yeah, I decided to have a have a go, and uh, I still remember going down and doing my my audition for the day. I mm. think Evan was there, Doogie yep, was Doogie in was, was in production, yep. and uh, I think Gary and a few other people were hanging around at the time. This is Rimmer Newcastle. Rimmer Newcastle, that's exactly yeah. right. Mm. And uh, yeah, so they all seemed very happy when I finished, and then it was several weeks later. I think I got the letter to say that I yeah. got accepted into. And see, dude, Mr. Forbes. He was crucial, seriously. If you didn't have the mustard, well, we're not trying to raise it, but we need someone who could actually do this. So, yeah. Yeah, for you to slip through that, yeah, because he was... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was the umpire. You're out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight totally. Up. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Totally. But apparently they all loved it, so yeah. it worked. And, <clears throat> you know, here I am all these years later. Mm. Full circle again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you came in. You came in. So you started doing Saturdays. No, I actually started you, doing drive time started, three days do, a week. You doing drive? Yep. Okay. Yep. So I was still living in the Upper Hunter. Yeah. But what I used to do was I would commute down. I would take the train from the Upper Hunter to Newcastle, which is about a two-hour trip. You're right. And then I was staying with the Ashmans. Oh, out yeah. Of Belmont. Okay, 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 yes. I yes. would stay with them for a, a few nights, and then I would basically go back home. Yeah. Um, wow. I think on Friday evening, the late train. Because they were still on air with us. Um, That's right. Chrissy, yep. Chrissy Ashman did um, mid afternoons, mornings. mornings. Yeah, yeah, mid, yeah, mid mornings, nine to like twelve or yeah. something like that. That's right. And then Tom Ashman was doing Sunday mornings. That's right. Um, but was also our church liaison at yeah. that time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right. I, I did. I, didn't know you I did drive. Them, yeah. yeah. So I did drive for. Um, well, I stayed with a lot of with some of my family as well down yeah. there at different times. But I ended up staying with the Ashmans because. Then I think the management come to me and said, "Look, would you would you like to do Saturday mornings as well? Saturday morning breakfast." Wow. Okay. I was like, "Cool, yeah, no problem at all." So I was doing the th Monday through to Friday drive, Saturday morning breakfast, yeah. and I did that for ages. And then I think yeah. it was after that that one day 
the I got called into the main office and um, they said, look, we, we've we've been praying about this uh, long and hard, and we feel like God has highlighted you to us, and we would like you to to start anchoring the breakfast show mm. Monday to Friday. Yeah. Wow. So now, what you didn't know behind the scenes was Shane and I have been doing breakfast for two and a half years. Oh, that's exactly right. And yeah. Uh, but prior to walking in there, uh, myself walking in there, the music director and breakfast guys they left yep. abruptly um, the same day I walked in. But I walked in to give them stuff for their van to give away. Because yeah. at that time, I was really knee deep in my hats, caps, and T-shirts. And I gave them to give away. Little did I know that this man was going to offer me a job or a future that I didn't know existed yet. But um, uh, So fast forward two and a half years, they were talking about, okay, we need to make a shift. Because yeah. lifespan of a breakfast guy is supposed to be two and a half years. Yeah. That's supposed to two and a half, three years. That's supposed to be the norm. doesn't always happen these days because you find a group that's great, you run with it. Mm. Um, but it takes a toll on the body. Hmm. Um, so they were looking at someone to rotate in. And Shane and I didn't know who that was going to be. We didn't know when that was going to be. Hmm. And I think we were told probably a week to two weeks we were shifting out that they had chosen somebody. And I still didn't know who you were. <laughs> I still didn't know who it was Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't tell us. Yeah. So, um, Top secret. Yeah. That's so while it. that was going on and we were winding up, John CIA was talking stuff. to me about moving into the music director's role because I had been helping him do it. Yeah. And we were two peas in a pod. So we like, okay, you can do this. Yeah. I'm like, sure, love to do this. So, boom, that was already set in stone for when you walk through the door. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you got Monday, we're told, okay, Friday's it, wind it down, and then boom. <laughs> did yeah. we get you in on the Friday? When you came in, did you come in or did you just come in cold on the Monday? That I can't remember. I think, no, I did come in I on the you Friday. I did come in, yeah. And we, and we did a whole introduction and blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I still I remember mean, that we're one, talking yeah. 16, 20, 18 years ago, what? man, something like that. Oh, yeah. that, that was, was uh, oh, yeah, oh goodness. man, that was 20 years ago, probably. Wow. Yeah, that would be yeah. 20 years ago now, Easy. I think, or yeah, just over yeah. 20 years ago. back, so yeah. Long while. Yeah, so yeah. that was the, the change in the guard. Then you came in and I went yep. to music. Yep, And exactly Shane right. went to drive. I think yep. he did drive time for yep. a while. Yeah, so that's how that transition will take part. So yep. now Mike's in the building. Yeah, <laughs> praise God, praise God. Amen. Mate, I, I um, there's so many other pieces to this pie which I want to get into. <laughs> I'm not sure, you know, what we've got time frame was, but... Um, you know, you you you, you talked about um, heading off to the US. Sure. So that's another really significant part of this, and then and then I know that you've you dipped in and out at uh, at Jubilee and uh, yep. and you know I know that you're planted here on the Central Coast at Liberty and there's you know there's uh, there's parts of this pie that I'm still really keen to <laughs> you know to understand. It's pretty big and, pie, and, man. And yeah. in amongst that, you did some pastoring as well. So like, sure. What, how did all that play out? Yeah. Well, look, I. So, yeah, obviously there's a whole bunch of pieces in there we won't probably get to today. But um, back in 2009, I think it was, um, I was invited by a friend of mine to go down to um, to Jubilee Church. Yep. In It was a long week. It was the June long weekend, June, July long weekend in, in 2009. And um, so I went down there. Um, just, again, at the behest of a friend of mine in Newcastle. We were going to church together in Newey. And uh, he said, mate, look, this is right up your alley. <laughs> so you'd love this place. I was like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. And I was just hanging out at the beach when he called me. Yeah. And so I went home, threw a few clothes, you know, a couple of changes of clothes in my bag and took off to Sydney. And, um, yeah, so I went and had the, had a meeting there. I think it was a Sunday morning. Uh, I went down there on a Sunday morning. I'm pretty sure it was. M- might have been a nightmare. I can't remember now, but... I got in there and um, I just remember standing in the midst of the the, the congregation kind of mm. thing and the music hadn't started or anything, you know, by that style. But when they did, I noticed everyone just got out of their chairs and just ran to the front. Mm. It was like a mosh pit at the front. And I was yeah. like, whoa. And, uh, you know, I'm just sort of standing there with my hands in my pockets and um, I remember just looking around just thinking. And the first thing I thought was, man, these people are so free. Yeah. Like, yeah. they are so free. And then yes. the Lord speaks to me, clear as a bell. Yeah. And he just said, son, all I want you to do is just close your eyes and lift up your hands. Man, this was hearkening back to when I got saved, right? Yeah, right. I heard the same thing again. Yeah. So I did that. And when I lifted my hands up, I felt them go through something. All oh, right. They went yeah. through. So I'll just, that's all I'll say. Yeah. I felt them go through something wow. as I lifted up. And then I just had this sensation of... 
this like a liquid, like a warm liquid pouring all over my body. Yeah. And I was just instantly in this place of peace. Like, yeah, I wow. mean, unbelievably so. And, uh, and, and again, I, I just... Again, I had just had these crazy encounters with the Lord yep. on that particular day. And then I, I, I don't even remember who preached. I don't remember what the message was, nothing. But I do remember walking down to the front um, because they opened it up for ministry. And I just found a hole somewhere that I could go in because there was people everywhere yes. out the front. There were bodies yeah. all over the floor and right. it was all happening. And I just went out the front and I just stood there and Finney and he did you see and he walks over to me and introduces himself and we have a bit of a chat and he's like oh you're from Newcastle oh man that's great you come down and he said can I pray for you and I'm like sure go for it well he lays hands on me and starts praying for me and the next thing I know I'm on the ground <laughs> and I'm crying and I'm just shaking all over and yeah. and it was like the same thing wow. I'm Wow. into this radical encounter with Jesus Wow! on the floor at Jubilee and he stayed there for probably oh man 10 minutes 15 minutes with his hands on me praying for me mm. and so to cut a long story short over a period of time I started going back you know I, I started going back there like once a month mm -hmm. then it was once a fortnight and then I just felt the Lord speak to me and say right I want you to sell yourself into this church and these guys are going to be your spiritual mum and dad beautiful so you know I, I obviously I shared that with them yeah. over the course of months and um, that's exactly what happened so I got sewn in I used to do a four hour round trip to go to church every Sunday wow wow yeah yes. that's huge and it's worth it wow. do you believe anyone's been there it's a great great house well, to be part of being slain in the spirit I remember I used to do night church at City Life right City Life before I was married yeah and uh, day church you know, the church I was involved in actually youth pastor right? we didn't have a night service so I used to go out and do night church and I remember you up the front one, 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 one time they were praying, laying hands and something going, and you just let out this massive scream, oh, God, and fell backwards. <laughs> they caught you, carried you out. I remember that. I'm like, okay, there goes my crack. Yeah. <laughs> God, I don't remember that, man. Oh, and look, I'm not one for courtesy falls either, just, just in case people listening in oh, this no. morning. Like, I'm, I'm all for the authentic. If it ain't real, yeah. don't give it to me. Yeah, you know, I won't touch it with a barge pole. Yeah. That was real. You were laid out. I mean, me and Simon Hassan were sitting with each other. We're like, you were gone, man. You were gone. It's dude. been known to happen. I, I think Joe Chad Whitman was there too that night. I think she was there. I think Joey was there. Oh well, wow, okay, oh, man. Because yeah. that's right. Because we used to before we were all married. We, we used to, we, had we used to hang around together. Thing. Yeah, we used to do dinner with each other. Yeah, God, man. Right yeah, dude. Oh, God, before we went to that last break, I, I remembered that because we were all in a group. It was me, you, Joey, Janelle. Um, oh, Anissa, it was it was a, it was a few of us. We were all in our what late twenties. Oh, we would 20s, have been by then, yeah. Late twenties, and yeah. there was there was nothing to do for young adults. No, so we we just started having dinners together. Yep, I, I mean, we just you know just let let's do in the week thing. I remember that. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah. I remember that. Yeah, dinners hey. out and church things that yeah. were on and different things. Oh, we used to go. Goodness. We used to go to a, a bunch of those things. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I remember clearly getting carried out of a uh, Tim Hall meeting up there one time. It might have been Tim Hall. Someone was speaking. I don't know who it was. It was at the old NCC, Newcastle yes. City Church, yeah, yeah, around yeah, there yeah, on yeah. the wharf. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Darko yeah. Coljack was the yes. senior pastor at yeah. the time. So, yeah, yeah. Well, had a lot of history, for, a lot of water yeah. under the bridge there, bro. Because I was there for his introduction. <laughs> right. Did the first day he was there, right. I went to that too as well. But yeah, I remember that, dude. You just laid back. I, I don't even know if you knew he was back there. You just fell out and just caught you. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing I know, you're being ushered out. You can see you being carried out above the way. Like it was a concert. Yep. Here's another one. Yep. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yep. I remember that. So uh, you got so you got uh, radically in, introduced uh, into a deeper life through right. Pastor Finney. Right, right. So, you know, so I started, they, there's a bit more to your story. Cause you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's get there. Yeah, so I, I started regularly attending down there. Like I said, I did a four-hour round trip every Sunday to church and I was so excited to get up early of the morning and Sunday to go down there mm. and all the way in the car I'd be just like oh I cannot wait to see what you're going to do today God <laughs> like this is this is really wild what's been happening yeah. down there yeah. and then uh, there was a night where the Holy Spirit was just moving amazingly and um, and I was sitting on the edge of the uh, the platform ministry time had finished so you know there's people everywhere and doing whatever and and the Lord speaks to me and um, 
and it was just this, again, it was one of those just clear, clear, clear directions from the Lord um, about getting a few of the guys together from Newcastle mm. and meeting up one night through the week because he wanted to do some things. So I was like, okay. At the same time, there were some other people who had traveled down from Newcastle, and they were talking to Finney mm. on the other side of the church building at the same time as this was happening, That yeah, I and I found right. out this later on, but yeah. they basically were saying, look, we love what God is doing here. Yeah. I mean, how can we get this happening in Newcastle? Yeah. And I think Finney pointed over to me over on the other side of the building and said, see that guy over there? Um, go talk to him. So they come over to me, had a bit of a chat, and... Um, the next thing we know, we, we I think it was later that week we met together. There was four of us just met in a house, and it was just like heaven opened in that house, man. People were having angelic encounters. Yeah. You know, we were seeing, you yeah. know, the Lord. There was yep. just words just getting dropped out of heaven into our spirits. Mm. And uh, so we just said, look, let's start doing this regularly. Yeah, beautiful. Just meeting together and fellowship and hanging out. Yeah. So we started doing that on a Thursday night. We went from four and weeks later by the time I invited Finney to come up one night mm. to share with us. And we had 78 adults in the house. Yeah, wow. 78 of them. That's, that's so a So it was a church, place. man. That was a, <laughs> basically a church got birthed, yeah. you know, you could yeah. say. And we had a whole thing down at Jubilee that happened one night where it just spontaneously erupted into this thing. So. Wow. Wow. I basically had hands on me and laid, just was commissioned out with a few other people, and that was the very first church plant of Jubilee Church. Yeah, wow. And so, wow. Um, yeah, they had designs on me of being the senior leader, and that's exactly what happened. So we went from a house to uh, into an old Baptist church building, I think it was in Cardiff, mm. and um, didn't advertise or anything, and, and the place was just packed all the time because... Wow. You know, my whole my whole frame was I'm not here to build a church. Like I'm here, you know, I'm not here to build numbers. I'm here to see what the kingdom of God looks like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm yeah, here to experience yeah, the yeah, kingdom, absolutely. and I want other people to come into that. Yeah. 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 And so that was the whole point of it. You know, um, people would always ask me, oh, "How many people you got coming to the church?" I'm like, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't care about numbers. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm not here to build that. I'm here mm. to create a place where. Yeah. The kingdom can be manifested where God can just be Himself, you know. Yeah, like, beautiful. Because that's what people were crying for, and I remember, mm. I remember meeting these older people, like they were in the eighties by this stage, who would come into the church. They'd found their way mm. there, yeah. and they were like, "Man, we've been praying for something like this yeah. for fifty years," yeah. you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. And it was happening. So Hallelujah. that was amazing, you know. So we ended up outgrowing that place. We ended up going into. Um, a public school, Cardiff South Primary School it was, into the auditorium. And it just so happens at the time I went to look for bigger buildings, they'd gotten a new principal who was born again, spirit-filled. Oh, wow. So it was just like God just lined it up right there. Yeah, bam. wow. So, I mean, some of the wildest things used to happen in those meetings. <laughs> I mean, we had, you know, I've seen people who had radical encounters with Jesus who had come from other countries, completely unchurched. Yeah. You know, to the point where I remember one Chinese girl, I met her. She was from mainland China. And um, I met her at the start of the meeting. She didn't speak much English at all. So, you know, I was just trying to be nice, shaking hands and, you know, yeah. hello, nice yeah. to have you here. Uh, we went out for tea later on that night with a group of people. And one of the people that brought her had said, oh, bro, did you hear what happened to that young girl earlier tonight? I'm like, no, what happened to her? They said, dude, during the worship, man, she was just standing there with her eyes closed, unchurched, and she comes out of her body into heaven and is standing before the Lord. And he's got this big smile on his face looking at her and begins to talk to her and tell her mm. how much he loves her, Come on. how much he thinks about her, some wow. of the plans that he's got for her life, wow. that he's sending her back to China and all that kind of stuff. So. Wow. And then she wow. comes back into her body and she's just boom, awake and all of it just looking around going, what just happened? Yes. Yeah, Probably wow. in Mandarin, you know what I mean? Yeah, yes. <laughs> or, or Cantonese or something. But like, what just happened? And those guys end up sharing that with me later on that night. So I'm like gobsmacked, as you'd imagine. But, yeah, I'm, like, but I'm like, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is what, yeah, this is what the yeah. gathering's supposed to look like. Yep, yep, yep. So, you know, I've seen miracles of healing 
we used to have those constantly. Mm. We're always getting people. You know, we had one lady who came in who had MS. Yeah. When I first met her, she was in a wheelchair. Yeah, right. Um, had an ulcer in her leg that just would not heal. And over the course of probably maybe a couple of years, I guess, we would just continue to lay hands on her and pray for her. Beautiful. And so we saw her come out of the wheelchair Wow. To a walking frame, yeah. to a walking stick, yeah. to finally no walking stick, going back to work full time, wow. and not only that, the Praise ulcer God. completely healed, where it was yeah. brand new skin on yeah. a leg. Praise God! Amen. Praise God! Amen. And these, this is just like yes. scratch of the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah, we yeah. saw that yeah. we deaf people walking out healed. Yeah, hallelujah. You know, yeah. Wow. So, and that was one of the things that we just went after was the presence. Yeah. You know, our. Our worship times, we had them just open, <laughs> free-flowing, prophetic worship they would turn into. And yeah. so, yeah, there was, a, there was a whole bunch of stuff that went on there that God was doing. It was amazing. And this is all before Bethel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness. Exactly. So what was it called? We were called Grace River Church. Grace River Church. Grace River Church. That's a good yep. name for a church. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And there was a whole lot of that flowing, I, I guarantee it. Oh, that's so I beautiful. guarantee it. Actually, there's a, so many things we could explore in all of that. But um, I know a good friend of ours, Pastor Tony Ray at Grace Community Church here in the Central Coast, he's, he's a big advocate of, of persistent prayer, you know, and uh, and just going after, you know, particularly healing, long-term stuff that yeah. maybe it didn't, you didn't see that happen in an instant or in a right. moment. But next time you're with them, pray again. Yep. Next time yeah. you're with them, pray again, go again, go again. And you were saying over a period of maybe 18 months, yep. you see this collective gathering of, of grace upon this woman so yep. that she's completely healed in her walking and back in the workplace. Like that's a, yep. that's a glorious testimony of persistent prayer, yep. believing God for his promises. In Absolutely. Ah, oh, wonderful. Like I said, we saw the instantaneous things yes. yeah. and we yeah. saw the long-term things. Yeah. But Beautiful. in all of that, we saw people healed. Yeah, hallelujah. We saw the kingdom yep. manifesting Manifest. itself yep. in operation. And, you know, my biggest thing as a, as a pastor at the time and a teacher yeah. was Teaching is probably more my primary gift than pastoring. Right. I mean, I love people. I've got a heart for. I love people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love the body, but for me, you know, my my I guess my biggest priority was truth. Right. Just bringing straight biblical truth. Okay. Mm. Who is God? What's His character and His nature like? You know. Yeah. Um, what are the things that He's done? Yeah. You know. Um, and and secondly, who who are we as people of God? You know, what is our identity now as, as believers? Are we a little bit of a mixture of the old and the new, or are we strictly new? Are we fully healed as far as the way we think, or are we on a progressive journey of healing? So there was all of that that came in. But again, the main focus of the church at the time was to just be centered and based around the presence of God. Yeah, so it was beautiful. nothing. Can't go wrong there. <laughs> it was nothing for us to, you know. I'd, I'd, I would be studying the word through the week, and then I would have this message. I'm like, man, this is going to rock the foundations. <laughs> and I would get to Sunday, and the presence of God some Sundays would be so thick, yeah. so thick in the room, and He was doing so many things that I never even got to the message. Yeah, yeah. We would just have these extended worship times, and I would hear the Lord say, "Right, open this up." Because I want to minister to people. Mm, beautiful. He was beautiful. already doing things through them to them during worship. Yeah. But then came the laying on of hands. Yeah. You know. Um, so it was it was a whole lot of stuff there. It's that went brilliant. On. It's brilliant. Amen. brilliant. Amen. Our guest today, Michael Wright. Oh my goodness. Woo! More than your average bricky announcer. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh, awesome. Delight to have you in the program, Mick. Appreciate. Uh, who you are and what you carry and the great gift that you are here in the region of the Central Coast. Mm. See you next week. You've been listening to an encore presentation of New Expressions, which can be heard live every Friday morning at 10 a.m. on 94.9 Rima Central Coast.